Now that we have this conditional properly checking for the length of the tasks list, let's move on to the next step, which is allowing our code to actually, uh, to actually catch requests, to catch post requests, and to add items to the tasks list. Okay, so to do that, I actually want to use a different technique than we've used previously. I want to enable this same handler method to accept both get and post requests, okay? So to do that, I can use a similar syntax as I've been using to restrict the type of request that a given handler can, can accept. But I can just, since this, this methods equals this item on the right hand side of the assignment is just a Python list, I can add multiple items to it. So I can specify that the request methods this handler should accept are both get and post. Okay, so now when my form is coming in, I basically want a way to check whether or not I'm in the process of handling a get request or a post request. Um, and there's a there's a uh, reasonably reasonable way to do this within Flask. The way to do that is to check the request dot method value, and I can say if that's equal to post, let's go ahead and get the given task out of the request and add it. So if we come back here and just remind ourselves what's in this template, the input has name equals task. So that will be the name of the parameter that's passed in in a post request when this form is submitted. So that's the, the name of the thing I want to grab out of the request. So I can say task equals request.form task. And then I want to add this to the global tasks list that I have up here. So I can say tasks.append task. Okay. And notice the nice thing about this is I only have to add this one conditional check. The rest of this code still works. It's still going to render the template and pass in the list of tasks. Um, so sometimes when you're, you know, when you're processing forms, depending on exactly what you're doing, it may be more efficient to break up the, the rendering and the processing into separate handlers, that one that handles a get or the rendering and one that handles a post or the processing. Um, in this case though, based on what we want to, uh, to, to exhibit as behavior, having them both in the same handler is going to be pretty nice for us. Okay, so now this will go ahead and add the task to the list and the new list with um, one more new thing added to it will be passed into the template. In the template, however, we're still not displaying the tasks anywhere. So let's go ahead and add code to do that. So basically what I wanna do is I wanna add an else clause. So in this case, I'm checking, sorry, I can't type in and talk at the same time. Uh, above here, I'm checking the length of the tasks list. If that's zero, I'm rendering this message. If it's not zero, I want to display the list. So I can add an else clause between the if and end if by just saying else right there. You can also use elifs within Jinja templates too, just like you can in Python. So here I want to now display each item in the list and to do that, I'm going to use an, um, an unordered list or a bulleted list. So let me create the outer tags for that list. And within it, I want to uh, loop over the list of tasks. And for each task in the list, I want to create a new list item that has the name of that task within it. So I'm going to need a new uh, Jinja construct, which is a for loop. And so for loops in Jinja are very similar to those in Python. Let's look at what they look like. As with conditionals, I'm going to use curly brace percent uh, syntax here, and I can say for task in tasks. I don't need a colon at the end of this line the way I would in Python. And so inside of that, I put the code that I want to repeat. And this in particular will be to output the value of the loop iterator variable task. And then below, I can close my for loop using end for the same way I used and if to close the conditional block. Okay, great. So I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and, and go back and uh, I'm going to restart my application because I think I made a change that um, that global variable, that change needs to be reloaded. And of course it doesn't hurt to restart. Okay, so we rendered our form again, and now since the task list is empty, this is the same thing we saw before. Let's go ahead and try to add something. So um, my current task is to finish the Jinja lesson videos. All right, when I hit enter, that submitted a, a post request. We can see the post request logged here in the console. We see that there was a post request to slash to-dos. 
that task, that text, was grabbed out of the request by this conditional block. This request.method equals post. Um, that, that conditional was true. That condition was true. And so inside of this, I grabbed the task out of the request and added it to this global variable list. One note about this is this string is case sensitive, so if you put lowercase post, um, your condition will, will in fact fail. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a couple additional items. Um, after I finish the lesson video, I'm going to have to post it. And then I need to take my dog Jack for a walk because I've been neglecting him. Okay, so there we go. Simple task list using Jinja and uh, the Flask framework.